Hi, Jane Evans, the Lasting Life Change Coach, talking to you about rewards. So I have here a packet of crisps and other brands are also available, of course. At the weekend, I managed to persuade myself I deserved a reward for my hard work in the past week. So even though I intellectually know there's no nutritional value in crisps, and I don't need them, they don't serve any purpose, apart from feeling like a reward, of course I bought them, and of course I've been eating some every day, giving myself that excuse since, and they're nearly gone. So why are rewards not helpful to us, and why can they even impact our mental health and our well-being? Well, there was recently on Channel 4 a programme looking at, well in fact it was called Train Your Baby Like a Dog and it caused a massive reaction on social media. Some of you may have been aware of it and I was involved, um, well I just signed the petition that there was running asking Channel 4 not to show the programme and shared it widely because rewards don't respect the whole child. Rewards certainly don't respect a tiny baby. And why is that? And, and this is what underpinned the program. Basically, the dog training was the woman who is a dog trainer, she is nothing to do with children apart from she's raising her own little child using her dog training techniques, has no background in early years, no background in anything to do with children or young people. So let's roll out a program with her. So to go back to my point, so the program hinged on her interpreting training tips and exercises she does with her dogs and then going away and thinking about how she could adapt them to use with the children. So you see one clip where there's this this very, very young child, I think she's maybe 19 months, I, I, don't, I don't recall now, but she's a, she's a toddler, and um, she struggles with bath time and with going to bed because she gets left to scream herself into a terrible state in her bedroom on her own, so it's becoming a very scary experience. So the dog trainer has her standing in a bath, and if she's happy, relaxed, and she stays in the bath, she clicks the clicker and she puts a chocolate drop in her mouth. Luckily, not a dog one, but it's, you know, it's the same principle. Um, with the little boy she works with, the three-year-old, she uses a game with him that she uses with dogs, where with him, he has to watch a timer and he has a task to do in a certain timer in another room away from his parents so that they get a breather and they just get the time that they need away from him. That's actually not the point of being a parent. Yes, we all crave breaks because it's exhausting, but children need to be able to have access to us when they need it, not to be dog trained away from it. So let's get back to the idea of rewards because whenever I talk about not using rewards and not using consequences for children or adults, people get very upset <laughs> because it's a very traditional model to be fair. And the thing that's mainly comes my way in interviews and also uh, on social media posts is, ah, but Jane, you're not preparing them for the real world. In the real world, we go to work and the reason we go to work is we get rewarded with a paycheck. Well, that's true, you know, we do get rewarded with money, but the system that, they're, that we're then building inside of ourselves is can be very negative and can be very stressful and therefore harmful to our mental and physical well-being. If you've ever been in a job, and I have been in a few, several probably, that I've only taken based on the need to have money, and even since I've been freelance, you know, there have been uh, trainings that I've, I've agreed to do where I haven't been presenting my own stuff. It's stuff I believe in, but it's not in the way that I would say it, and it's not using my slides. And although I did it because I needed the money, it always made me miserable. It always made me stressed because I wasn't doing something that connected with me, with a feeling that felt good inside of me. The money still came in, but it was not what I call happy money because it wasn't happy work. 
So we might get trained into this idea of you go to work to get the money, but there's a hell of a lot going on in between the work and the money. And what is going on is our emotions, our feelings about what we are doing. And they are gonna be what you are with 24 seven. If you really dislike or find your work overwhelming or stressful, then it's going to cause you a lot of emotions and emotions have a physical presentation in our body and in our brains. And when they are not healthy ones, they make us ill because it's, you know, negative emotions in the body show up as tension and pain and illness. And in our brain, it's like constantly taking money out of the money machine, the ATM. Um, you know, miserable, stressful feelings are like cash withdrawals every day, every day, every day from the wellness bank and nothing going back in. So what is more important whether we're raising children or we're thinking about what do I want to do in life and honestly I urge you to spend time with this more than anything else is to work out what actually makes me feel any level of contentment when I think of speaking in front of audiences about anxiety about childhood trauma, about brain development, about how we can be healthier because we have different ways of behaving and different practices and different connections with our body resources that literally I can feel my, my heart leap out of my chest. If I think of standing in front of an audience and talking about football, <laughs> I can just, it's like a cold lump of concrete just arrived in my body. FYI, don't like football. Um, so they're both speaking, but one is speaking about something that I passionately care about and am very informed about. And one thing is I could do it if somebody offered me, I don't know, 20 grand, I'd go speak about football, um, but it wouldn't make me happy. Uh, yeah, I'd get the 20 grand. Well, you know what, it's not so bad, but I couldn't consistently do that. Even if someone was gonna pay me 20,000 pounds every time, it would make me miserable. So rewards are not necessarily, well, I would say they are definitely not the thing to focus on. And they can become actually really unhelpful habits that we then, so the irony being, yes, we go to work based on getting the money, that's the reward. And then we take the money because the work makes us so miserable and we have to reward ourselves with things like unhealthy food, alcohol, um, stuff we just stuff that we don't need, more stuff, um, more exciting experiences, that holiday we can't afford, or we can afford a holiday, but not that kind of holiday. You get my drift, you know, it's, it's that thing of, you know, we're so miserable now, we're so stressed, we're so unhappy, we then have to reward away the rewards that also aren't making us happy. So what is important to do is to, if you can't escape the, the, the work or the, the thing that you're having to study for right now, it may be that you're studying for exams that you know you wouldn't be choosing to take, but you have to. So what you can do, the antidote to this, if you can't escape the situation in you, you're in right now, is take a breath and honestly find something that you can actually feel grateful about. So it might not be the situation you find yourself in, but it might be that, you know what, I, I have somewhere safe to live. It might be that you, that you have a phone and you, you know, you're really grateful for your phone. I'm often very grateful for my phone. So it can be, it can be anything real, real in your real life. It doesn't have to be some big magical thing. Um, so just reach for something. When you, when you access gratitude, it, just floods your whole system with feel-good chemicals so you can't then feel unhappy and so aware of what's going on that's, that's not working for you. And the other thing to do is to honestly, whether you do it um, with a coach or whether you do it with somebody you really trust, maybe a friend or a family member who's really good at listening, get a really big piece of paper, or as big as you can get, 
really big. Um, and put in the middle, I want. And then again, just take a couple of breaths. Maybe do some gratitude again, because that always settles your nervous system and your brain. And then just whatever comes into your head, thinking about what do you want to be doing in your life, put it on that piece of paper. And then again, maybe a couple of breaths and revisit each one and check in each time which one makes your heart actually kind of leap a bit and if that is the thing even if it sounds crazy I mean I, I didn't honestly think that I would end up being um, an international coach an international speaker a tv and, and radio expert uh, have books published I mean I, I those were the things I set myself but how the hell was I ever going to do it but they were the things that excited me so I have found ways, I have worked and worked and worked because this is the stuff that in and of itself feels like a reward. So I, I hope that helps you think about rewards in a different way. And when we get on this track, honestly, it, it's just that bit easier. We do need good people along the way. I've had great people help me along the way, but it starts with you and it starts with finding what is that thing when I think about it that just gives me a tiny lift because that's the thing to go after and yeah the money the money actually will come then but you will care less about that although we all need money um, because your life honestly it will feel just great every day on some level so take care and get really curious about what does light you up in some way and then follow that path.